have read in the news recently that a Milton, Ontario man whose home was invaded by, I think, at least three people, one with a gun, was charged with secondary murder for shooting one of them uh, in self-defense. And his lawyer claims that the person uh, was basically th about to threaten their mother. And it's a bit shocking, of course, uh, that he's charged with secondary murder, but it's not surprising to me because the police often in this situation will do this, lay a charge and let the courts or the Crown Attorney sort it out later. But this is a really vexing question. You know, you're in your home, you're, you're sound asleep, you're a 110 pound woman or, or a man, it doesn't matter. Uh, someone breaks in your home, they're a large, powerful man, they have a knife or a gun, what do you do? Well. The police will tell you, well, your adrenaline's going, you're scared, you see this person, what the heck do you do? Uh, the police, of course, will tell you, try and get out of the house if you can, and, and that's obviously the best thing to do. Don't confront the person, get out of the house, phone 911. <laughs> you know, far, far better to get your television stolen than, than, you know, get your life taken. So, but what do you do uh, with this situation if you're, you now fear for your life, they're coming at you? Well, in Canada, uh, you're allowed to protect yourself in self-defense. Under Section 34 of the Criminal Code, if, you're fear, if you have imminent fear that you're being attacked or about to be attacked or, or assaulted, you can use reasonable force to protect yourself. And, and you have to act reasonably. I mean, I'll, I'll use some examples, but it's proportional force, okay? So, for example, let me give you one clean, clear example. A person's coming at you with a gun and you happen to have a gun in your nightstand, well, you're about, you, you fear that they're about to shoot you, or they're threatening you, well, that seems to me to be reasonable proportionate force in that situation, obviously. Now, let's say you're, another example, let's say you're a large man, powerful bodybuilder, you're a trained fighter, and uh, some kid breaks in your house and, and they're not that much of a threat to you and they have no weapon and you just go vicariously beat them up. Well, you're not allowed to do that. You're allowed to remove them from your house using reasonable force in that situation. You might detain them for the police or whatever. The kid's going to be scared. In between those are, are a lot of gray areas and it's a very difficult situation in Canada. New laws were brought in in about 2012 or 13, uh, redefining our self-defense uh, under Section 34 and protection of property under Section 35, uh, supposedly simplifying the law. But we haven't had, I don't think, enough guidance from the courts as yet to fully articulate a home invasion situation where the lines can be drawn in this situation. And I can think of other gray area situations. For example, you know, someone's coming at you with fists in a home where you, would you be entitled to use a knife on them? You may be. Every situation is going to be different and has to be analyzed. And as I said, uh, I find the police on many situations where there's a death involved, you know, they're going to analyze it. They have to have reasonable probable grounds to lay a charge, of course, but oftentimes they're just going to lay the charge. There you are. You may be completely innocent. You were mortified. You didn't, you're just sleeping in your home, and now you're facing secondary murder. Can't imagine how this Milton man, especially if what his lawyer says is true, that this uh, intruder was going after his, his older mother, for my God, now he's charged with secondary murder, facing a lifetime sentence. So, I mean... I went online and I know, I know the advice, well, you, you try and retreat, try and get the heck out, but ultimately if that person's coming at you, you're allowed to use reasonable force, proportional force. That may be in certain situations if you fear for your life, that person's got a gun or a knife, it may be a gun, it may be a knife, it may be using your fists or grappling with the person in other situations. I mean, I mean, if a person's just shaking you, you don't take out your gun and shoot them, obviously. But it's a really troubling situation. Um, we don't have enough guidance in Canada on this point, and it's very sensational in the media. There's no question, and I, I really, uh, I quite feel quite badly for this person because you can imagine being woken up in the middle of the night, even if he made a mistake with the gun, my God. I mean, these people broke into his home. What's the answer to that? Well, I'll tell you the answer in many states is you're allowed to do it. I mean, in the states, you've got the Castle Doctrine. In, in Texas, my God, don't, don't try and break in in Texas because you'll get shot, and the person might go scot-free, uh, obviously, because they've got much more stringent lines. Where's the line here? Well, I think a lot of people are going to say, well, you should be entitled to 
defend yourself in your home and protect your property. And by the way, this is for self-defense in your home. You know, defense of property, just because a person's broken your property and they're not attacking you, you're not allowed to take punching and kicking and hitting and stabbing and shooting them. I mean, you'd be entitled to use reasonable force to remove them from your property. Let's say you have a trespasser. Now, if that person escalates it, you can escalate your force. If they escalate it so that you're fear for life, you can escalate it. If they escalate to the point of using a knife, well, you might be able to use a gun or a knife on them as well. The other problem with these situations, of course, if you shoot someone in your house, well, how the heck did you have a loaded firearm? You might be facing other charges because there's mandatory minimums for loaded firearms, and how did you get that? Because bullets are supposed to be stored and trigger locks and bullets aren't supposed to be in guns and, and whatnot. But I know a lot of people who sleep with uh, you know, law-abiding citizens who'll keep a baseball bat or a golf club in, you know, near their, them because they're, they're fearful. And we live, unfortunately, in a society that's going to face this problem. And I think you're going to see more of these cases in the news going forward. We've got a lot of drug addicts, unfortunately, in society, a lot of home invasions. I, I can't imagine how someone <laughs> could be so stupid as to break into someone's house at night. My God, don't do that in Texas because you'll get shot and, that <laughs> and you'll be shot dead very quick. Don't mess with Texas. But anyway, that in a nutshell is what's going on in Ontario. It's a really gray area. I've just touched on it very lightly. It's very complicated. And ultimately, if this goes to trial on that second degree murder, there's a lot of factors. All the facts have to be looked at, the role that people played, whether the other person had a gun, whether they were coming at him, whether they're threatening him with a gun, whether they're threatening his mother. And you know, that, that's what's going on there. Now, conversely, there was a case, there was a knifing in, in Nova Scotia on a home invasion, and that person wasn't charged. Um, uh, it, obviously, the police there thought they were acting in self-defense. So I, I'm, I'm assuming the uh, other invasion person must have been threatened in their life, either fists or with knife. I mean, there are situations, I think, I've seen it. I've won, won a case like this once where a person um, was confronted with fists and actually stabbed a person because they were much, much bigger and they feared for their life. I mean, a 200-pound man who's a trained fighter on 130 pan who's not with fists can kill that person. So would you be until to knife them? Probably. I don't recommend it. I just retreat from that man. But these are vexing situations. Every f fact's different. And there's a whole laundry list under Section 34 of the cr Criminal Code, which you have to consider in these cases. And uh, God help that guy in Milton. I, I, I really hope that, uh, you know, the, the right thing's done by him, by, by the Crown Attorney, or ultimately in court. And, and uh, his lawyer seems to think this is a, a travesty of justice. And it may very well be. We, I don't know. I don't know the facts, so that remains to be seen. Now, we have, I want to mention to you, we have offices uh, across the province. We have a, a Toronto office. Uh, we have Windsor, uh, London, and Kitchener. And feel free, for example, to call our, our Kitchener, or I should say our Toronto or Kitchener uh, uh, assault or domestic assault lawyers. We have sexual assault lawyers. We handle everything under the sun. And we'll help you and, and look forward to your call if you need a free consult. Thank you for watching our video. We are absolutely committed to bringing you the best possible criminal and DUI educational videos. If you found this video helpful, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you've been charged with a criminal offense in Ontario and require our services, please click on the link in the description below.